My name is Heather McCormick and I'm the Youth Media Program Coordinator here at Somerville Media Center. Usually April vacation, young people choose to take a break and relax from doing all of the hard work that they do all year round in school. Um, but this April vacation, Somerville Media Center welcomed 11 incredible young people aged 8 to 13 who, instead of wanting to take a break from work, decided that they wanted to spend their April vacation doing some of the hardest work around, which is journalism. So uh, we invited these young people uh, from all over the city to come together and learn uh, from experienced journalists how to write a story, how to ask good questions, be an interviewer, um, how to put together a news package and produce it and edit it and get it ready uh, to be broadcast as part of the Somerville Neighborhood News, just like any other broadcast created by an adult. Uh, the week started with a panel of local journalists, including Chris Ferrone and Jason Promise of the Boston Institute of non and Profit Journalism, Cole Rosengren, who does the trash and recycling beat for some uh, various publications, and M. Castle from the Somerville Scout and Cambridge Scout, um, who shared some of their knowledge about um, the ins and outs of journalism to our young reporters. Then the next day, they got to go to the Somerville Public Library and learn from some of the experts there how to do real research and how to understand which facts are facts and which are alternative facts and how to tell the difference between those things. Um, after that, they did some research on topics of their choice that they were passionate about and had to come back just like any editorial board. They had to pitch their ideas. Uh, to, the, to the whole group and we as a group voted on which ideas we were going to pursue and thus we had three different news packages. One on the importance of libraries and library funding, another on bicycle safety and cyclist accidents especially in Somerville and Cambridge, and the last one being about the update regarding Union Square, US2, and Union United, and the quest for a community benefits agreement for uh, the new developers, US2, who will be um, in charge of redeveloping Union Square. So these were not fluff pieces. These were not about puppies and kittens. These were about real hard-hitting um, issues that really impact our young people and our community as a whole. Um, and I'm incredibly proud of what they were able to accomplish in just four short days, and I think you will be too. Uh, so I am proud to present to you U News 2017, um, their packages for the Somerville Neighborhood News. We went to the Somerville Public Library to find out more about how it's funded and why it's important. We started by interviewing some library patrons to find out what the library means to them. We first asked them how often they went to the library and what they would do without it. I think I'd go to this library um, once every couple of weeks. About once a week? Uh, about uh, twice a week. I would have to spend a lot more money buying books all the time that I want to read um, because I wouldn't be able to just rent them. and. I would spend a lot more money on coffee because I would go to coffee shops more often to read there. It would be quite difficult because it offers an opportunity to sort of concentrate and write in a quiet space. It would be, um, I guess it's difficult because, you know, this place is a good place for me to go and yeah. um, do my work. We then talked to Kevin O'Kelly about funding and budgets. We started out by asking where the funds came from. A lot of our money comes directly from the city of Somerville, and a lot of it comes from a statewide fund called State Aid that's distributed, the money from that is distributed to towns throughout the state. Are the late fees for late books enough to cover additional costs in the library? No. Well, first of all, uh, the late fees, you know, just don't amount to that much money unless somebody keeps, say, 50 books out for like two years. Um, and uh, generally by that time they're not going to bring the books back anyway. Are you concerned at all about funding in the future? Not at the moment, no. Uh, the economy seems to be doing really well and also um, the city of Somerville, uh, both the government and the people, are really committed to the library. It's uh, recognized as a really important city institution. 
After that, we talked to Ward 2 Alderman Marion Houston. She told us more about library funding. I think if the budget were cut, and it would not be something I would support, I think we'd see um, there would really be not just a lack of services to people, but I think um, libraries serve a very important purpose in terms of establishing a sense of place for a community and for a city, and that just like having an excellent school system and an excellent police and fire department, libraries are part of that sort of foundation of a great city. So I think what would happen is there would be, you know, people would not have as many of the services that the library provides, the, you know, not just in terms of being a library, but also in terms of the activities that go on in the library. Um, and for people who don't have access to things like computers and et cetera, they wouldn't have a place to go. But I also think that it would hurt sort of the, the, found, the fabrication of the city. I think making the library a bit better would, would be able to support um, funding for expanded services, to think about the building, um, to make sure that we've got a, a good solid building for the library. And um, <clears throat> also, I think, you know, as I said, I'd love to see as we develop Union Square and we're thinking about what belongs in the square and what we could have in the square, I would love to see a branch library in Union Square that provided sort of a community meeting space function, um, places for people to meet up and to, to you know, I don't know, to access, um, you know, all the important parts of a library. We look forward to seeing what happens next with our libraries here in Somerville. For you News, signing off. Hello and welcome to the Somerville Neighborhood News. I'm Fiona and this is Isa. We're here with Ken Carlson, the head of the Somerville Bike Committee. We're, here, we're going to be asking him a few questions about bike lanes and bike safety. What is your opinion on bike lanes and um, that's a pretty big question. Um, I'll try to answer it fairly shortly. So um, as part of the Somerville Bicycle Committee, our job is to try to keep bicyclists safe in Somerville. And we are trying to get more and more safe places for people to bike. So we think that bike lanes are a pretty good place for people to bike. The safest place would be what you guys said earlier when we were talking would be the community path is a really super pl safe place to bike. And we're all about trying to make um, the city as safe as possible for everybody who wants to bike. So we do a lot of bicycle education. We do a lot of planning on how to make safer streets and uh, a lot of outreach to people to try to keep them safe while they're biking. I think that there are a lot of different competing interests on the roads, pedestrians, cars, and even dogs and bikes. And I think it's hard for everybody's rights to be always respected. So sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. I think that bike lanes are better than nothing, but I actually think that in some places, especially on Massachusetts Avenue, bike lanes are uh, not safe for cyclists. So Beacon Street is the busiest bike route in the entire Boston metro region, not just Somerville, but any place in Boston. And we looked at Beacon Street a few years ago and said, we need to have protected bike lanes. And protected bike lanes are bike lanes that are almost like having a bike lane on the sidewalk. It's separated from moving cars by a curb, but it's separate from the sidewalk too. So it's a place for pedestrians. There's a very safe place for bicyclists, and then there's a place for cars. So, um, so we put forward the idea for the protected bike lanes on Beacon Street, and they are being built this year. We're really excited. Anybody who knows me knows that I bike a lot. Uh, I have a lot of different kinds of bicycles, and I try to ride my bike every single day. And I think that in a place like Somerville, where we have so much traffic and so much density, it's a great way to get around and get exercise. There's probably not a day during the year when I don't bike, um, unless it's a big snowstorm. Riding your bike is help you a lot, like I always say. You know, it makes your, your blood circulation moving better, it makes you fit a little bit better. Bicycling can be safe. It is, um, if, um, it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to get around the city, but I think 
everybody has to obey the laws. Everybody has to be as careful as they can, motorists and bicyclists. And um, I think we all have to just get along really well together, and I think everybody will be safe. Usually we tell them about, because there's a law, you have to wear a helmet. When you have a bike, you need a helmet. You need a light for the car to be able to see you, and at night. And most of them, when you tell people that, it's for your own, it's for the own safety. My, my roommate, Amanda Phillips, was a uh, cyclist in Cambridge. Um, she got uh, hit by a car and died last June. Uh, she was riding her bike. She was wearing a helmet. Um, and it was an accident where uh, n- nobody was really to blame except for the uh, the bike lanes not protecting her. One friend of mine was killed last year uh, in a bike crash in Porter Square, uh, and he actually worked here at this company. So that was a very sad uh, moment for a lot of us, both here at this company, and he lived in Lexington, but he, he biked through Cambridge and Somerville every day, and he was uh, run over by a truck at Porter Square. So in response to that, we started um, a fund in his name. To um, So we raised about $10,000, and we're trying to use that money to promote safety for truck drivers around bicyclists. The cycling community in Cambridge and Somerville really came together, and it was just um, amazing to see people sort of get outraged and take action about cyclist safety in the city. Our friend died in Porter Square, and Amanda died Nanda Phillips died in Inman Square, all in about a four-month period, which was very kind of sad. But the sadness led to action, and I think the action is going to lead to safer streets. We try to educate everybody. We try to educate bicyclists. We try to educate pedestrians. We try to educate uh, motorists, people who drive. The slower cars go, the safer it is for pedestrians and the safer it is for bicyclists. So one is, please obey the speed limit. There are people, kids, people on bikes, people walking that we want to keep safe. In Europe, there's a thing called a Dutch reach where, let's say, I'm in the passenger side of the car. You want to open your door. Like, it's more, uh, it maybe feels easier to open it with this uh, this arm, right, if you're sitting in the right-hand side. But um, the Dutch reach is they always train people to open with the opposite arm. And that way, you can see behind you. And that reaching, you, uh, you sort of look over. Amanda was... The kind of person that is not a dangerous person and not a risk taker. And she was always the kind of person where if there was an emergency, you would hope she was there. And if it could happen to Amanda, it could happen to anybody. Like, um, sometimes I think we think that cyclists are like, oh, well, they were going too fast. They weren't looking, you know, like you should really be on the defensive if... um, if you're riding around in the city because it's a dangerous place. But really, um, it's dangerous for everybody, even if you're not being reckless on your bike. Think Bad things can happen like this at any time, and it's not any one individual's job to uh, make sure they don't happen. It's the job of the, the city because they're supposed to take care of the people that live there. We are Fiona Hanley, Issa Membrano Gomez, Maya Hanley, and Eleanor Bogosian. We were a part of the U News Youth Journalism April Vacation Camp. We went out to interview four people about bike lanes and bike safety. Thank you for your attention. Drive and ride safe on the busy roads. Try to be careful when opening your car door. Tensions continue between Developer US2 and local coalition Union United over the development of Union Square. Though the city has reached a covenant with US2, Union United still wants to make sure that they commit to a comprehensive community benefits agreement. Wig Zamor is a co-chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee. We sat down with Wig to get the scoop. So there are a lot of different ways that the community can benefit from development. Um, and some of them will be in a community benefits agreement. We spoke with Evan Cook of Somerville Community Corporation regarding the upcoming development. I am skeptical about how it will help the community because, um, yes, I do think development is great. I think 
re-fortifying the infrastructure of Union Square would be great, but I also know that with redevelopment comes a lot of pricey changes um, to the community, which means higher cost of living, higher rents, um, which means that a lot of people who live here right now will be moved out or displaced. Union United held a press conference on Thursday, April 20th, to speak about what they want from a, com a community benefits agreement. We have an opportunity now to make sure that we have a strong community benefits agreement. That really fights displacement, doesn't just give lip service to fighting displacement, that provides for affordability, that provides for wages that people can live on and afford to house themselves with. So we have to be careful to try to make sure that as we build new buildings, we try to have some affordable places for people to live who don't make a huge amount of money and for people to um, have small businesses that maybe not make quite as much money, but they add character and they add features to the community. So right now, um, Somerville is mostly renters. So I don't know if you live in houses that your parents own or if you rent, but most of the people in Somerville are renters. That's unusual in Massachusetts. Representative Mike Connolly told us his thoughts. You know, the development that's being proposed it, it may be something new for Somerville, but we've seen this kind of development in Boston, we've seen it in Cambridge, and the outcome all too often, again, is that longtime residents and particular renters get, Woo! Yeah! get pushed out of the community. And that is why I think this inclusive community benefits agreement is just absolutely imperative. It makes Woo! all the sense Woo! in the world. Woo! 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 You know, my question to you as to, what are you afraid of? Why yes. not come to the table yes. with elected officials, with city officials, and with the community, and with the folks in Union United who have spent years tirelessly organizing and building a very impressive coalition to be the voice of this neighborhood? The developers, of course, want to make money. Um, the community wants community benefits. And the city leaders want to make sure that the city as a whole makes sense. And those don't always align perfectly. So um, one of the questions is whether it's better to um, do things that everybody works together on or whether it's better to kind of fight it out. I don't want this to come as a surprise, but US2 is not doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. <laughs> They're doing it because they want to make money. And that is their right. They're a developer. I think what Mike brought up, uh, what do they have to lose? I think they have money to lose. A lot of the things that we want are gonna come out of their profit margins. I do not have a problem with that. I think they're still gonna make a lot of money. I think currently what's happening is that the people who live here, we're putting our lives into Somerville, we're paying taxes here, and we're basically paying for our own displacement. And I don't think that's right. Yeah. I think Bravo. we can demand a lot more from US2. I think they should negotiate with the community directly. I want to be clear. We do need to act, and soon. Development is badly needed in Somerville, as Ben said. We need more commercial space. We need more affordable housing. We need more green and open space. We need to be able to help this city to grow while making sure it works for everyone in the community. But we don't need to rush into a bad deal yeah. that drops a tower of luxury apartments into the square without a plan that ensures a bright future for all of our residents. US2 gets to go back to Chicago when all is said and done in this square. But we have to live with the consequences of what happens here. For you news, this is Ainsley, Mia, Stuart, and Tyler.